A lot of my success teachings revolve around the understanding of how to use the various mental faculties that we have in order to be able to make superior decisions and to have a higher sense of purpose and fulfillment in life. Now, when it comes to our mental faculties, we can operate from instinct, which is more natural response and it's physically embedded in us. As an example, if you touch a hot pan, you very quickly will move your hand without any conscious thought. The urge to have sex or uh, the need for safety, uh, all of these things are instinctual and they're deeply embedded in us and don't really require a lot of conscious thinking or evaluation. Most animals would display a very high level of instinct where they don't, they don't really process information, they just simply react. And there are certainly times in life where we need to use our instincts because we don't have enough time to be able to evaluate a situation. But you'll find that a lot of people predominantly rely on instinct and therefore they end up making inferior decisions in life that keep them struggling. Of course, the next level is intellect and a lot of people who have gone through uh, the academic system and have become professionals uh, predominantly rely on intellect, uh, the function of memory, reasoning and analysis to make decisions. In many cases, they're very good at going through data and they're able to you know, do some processing of that data because of the way that they have been conditioned. And certainly intellect is required in life for us to be able to succeed and make some good decisions uh, in, the, uh, in the business world, in the corporate world, uh, in the industry and in the marketplace. But what you will also find is that once people get to a certain level in life, when they are highly creative or they are highly uh, you know, entrepreneurial or they are demonstrating a very high level of genius capabilities or thought leadership, at that point, a lot of people are tapping more into their intuitive senses and their imagination more than their instinct and intellect. The concept of intuition is really about having a sense of knowing that sometimes guides us to making a really good and superior decision, which ends up resulting in very good outcomes without us doing a lot of processing uh, or data analysis. It's like just an innate sense of knowing. And it comes from the notion that a lot of the intelligence is out there in the quantum field, not just something that the human brain manufactures. And again, that is lent from that theory that a lot of the times when a human being passes away, it begs the question what happens to their accumulated experience, their intelligence and their consciousness. Uh, it, well, physics teaches us that energy is neither created nor destroyed. So is it possible that a person's accumulated intelligence and consciousness is not just destroyed upon them dying, but maybe goes into the quantum field and other individuals who learn practices around alignment are able to tap into this sense of knowing, this intuitive intelligence without really doing any intellectual work. and. Of course, there's a lot of research in this area and there is no conclusive data, but this is something that a person really has to sense to understand. It's not one of those things that you can necessarily explain through intellectual theory. Now, in my experience, I do rely a lot on this intuitive guidance to be able to make good decisions in life. Certainly, there are times in my life where I use instinct. There are times in my life when I use intellect. And there are times in my life I realize that instinct and intellect is not going to get me to the solution. And what I try and do is to get myself in a state where I'm becoming more and more intuitive and I naturally know what to do. And this is not something that I take credit for because to be intuitive, you really need to give credit to the intelligence that exists beyond your own brain. In this video, I really wanted to share this whole concept for you as to what are some of the practices that you can regularly engage in so that you start to get a more innate and better sense of knowing around what you're supposed to do without necessarily becoming instinctive or without relying on a lot of data to make intellectual decisions. The first thing that I do that I believe is enabling me to become more intuitive is I spend a lot of time in solitude. By being alone, I'm not so distracted 
by gossip, by other people's opinions, and it allows my thoughts to settle. And I find that when my thoughts settle, because there is not a lot of external stimulus around me, I find that that naturally heightens my intuitive senses. The second thing that you can do is you can spend time in silence. It's different from solitude because you can be in solitude and still be speaking to yourself. But silence really means that you are not engaged in the activity of speaking at all. And I think that also allows your thoughts to settle because when there is less noise, we can connect to what's around us through our auditory senses. And I believe that that also heightens our intuitive capabilities. The third is seclusion. Seclusion also works because you're getting away from the hustle and bustle and the activity. And I believe that a lot of the times that this quantum intelligence is a lot more powerful in areas where there's more nature and less electrical field. So seclusion also helps. And this is a practice that is used commonly by a lot of creative people. They tend to just move away from the cities and they move away to remote villages where they can be alone, but also more importantly, they can be connected to nature to develop their intuitive capabilities. The fourth thing is stillness. Now, stillness it really just means being very comfortable and being very relaxed in your physical presence and not feeling the need to move and certainly uh, minimizing any quick movements. There is something quite amazing about stillness. You'll actually find that when you're really, really still, you become extremely present. And when you're extremely present, I also believe that you become a much better manifester in terms of being able to manifest the outcomes that you truly want. So stillness is another thing because I think it really relaxes your nervous system and when your nervous system is relaxed, I believe that that enhances our ability to think clearly and that clear thinking results in us being able to make better decisions. And that I think is also another way that the intuitive senses make themselves known through the decisions that we make. And the last strategy that I believe also enables us to become highly intuitive is the practice of self-reflection. You see, it's not experience that makes us wise, it's evaluated experience. And self-reflection simply means to go through the experience again in our mind and try and understand what that experience was about. Was there any meaning in that experience? And were there any lessons in that experience? As we continually self-reflect, we start to find wisdom in everyday ordinary situations, which we generally tend to be quite dismissive about. Self-reflection is another activity that a lot of authors and writers and poets, a lot of inventors and discoverers and entrepreneurs engage in quite regularly as well. The reason I wanted to share this with you is because in order for us to get to a higher ground in life where we're making better decisions, feeling better about ourselves and feeling a high connection with the world, we need to get out of instinct and intellect and move towards intuition and imagination. I very firmly believe that the deeper we go within ourselves, the higher our capability to connect with what's out there. Being around lots of people, being around lots of activity, being around lots of stimulus sometimes prevents us from being able to step into our true power and being able to tap into the powerful faculty of intuition. <laughs>